In myth, she was called the Redeemer. Do you know the story of the Princess Issa? It was said this child would stop the madness of war. I was given memories of a world I will never see. Loyalty to a king I cannot serve. That she was to usher in a new age of peace and compassion. And love for a child I could not save. I found her. Scar giver. What do you think they want? Everything. They are a child of war. I was taught that love is weakness. One moment. I do love this part. There is a difference between justice and revenge. There is a price to pay for your defiance. Hold on. I don't want no trouble. We're not here to bring any. Let's show them that we're not afraid. Let's show them we're more than the shackles that bind us. Are you ready? You and I both know fear. has come for all that you love. A king is a man, and a man can fail. But a myth is indestructible. Protect each other and show them your mercy. among you is willing to die for what you believe. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Zack Snyder just dropped a brand new Rebel Moon trailer for the Netflix movie that's coming out later this year. It's actually part one of part two. I'll explain what's going on with the two different parts because one of the reasons why they released the trailer at Gamescom is because they're releasing a game based on the events of the two movies. It'll be set after the events of those, so I'll explain that too. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. Of course, I'll do more trailer videos as they release them, but we're also getting Ahsoka episodes tonight. I'll be doing videos for that as well, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that stuff. Funny coincidence, because a lot of this movie was inspired by Zack Snyder's original Star Wars movie that he had developed for Lucasfilm before he started the Snyderverse of DC movies back when the Man of Steel movie when he was on stage announcing the trailer, he talked a little bit about other influences too, like that classic heavy metal magazine. He liked the vibe of that. Everybody remembers the heavy metal movie. It's a classic. Just in general, the whole vibe, the tone, just the look, the feel of the movie is inspired by Seven Samurai Kurosawa films, which Star Wars films as well, but Star Wars itself, George Lucas said, was inspired by classic Kurosawa films. A lot of you have commented that you're seeing a lot of Battle Beyond the Stars influences in here too. The whole idea is that you have this evil empire, like the empire in Star Wars. There's an emperor, so to speak, played by Carrie Elways. What it looks like is going on in the trailer is that Sophia Batella's core character, who's sort of the protagonist, puts together this ragtag group of people who all used to be members of the empire's military, either generals or soldiers or just various people throughout their military. And for whatever reason, they all left at some point, like something tragic, something terrible happened, or the empire made them do something terrible. Usually it involves killing a bunch of innocent people. Pretty much the same vibe that you get from the Empire in Star Wars during the original trilogy. 
So no coincidence that we're actually seeing the resurrection of the Empire with Thrawn in the Ahsoka series episodes starting tonight. Pretty sure Zack Snyder didn't intend to time things that way on purpose, just a big coincidence. The first movie is coming out later this year. That's what this trailer footage is for. Part one is called Child of a Fire, which is probably a reference to Cora's childhood in the circumstances of her rise. I don't know if this is necessarily meant to be from her backstory, but this could be a reference to that. Something similar could have happened to her, like she came from a world that the Empire destroyed and she just became a member of their military. There are a lot of sci-fi, a lot of fantasy storylines that are similar to this, where like the character finds out what really happened, what their origin really was, and how the Empire wronged them, and eventually she rebels against them. Zack Snyder also made a lot of Dirty Dozen references, just a ragtag group of people that she winds up putting together. Some of them used to be members of the Empire's military, some of them not. Rebel Moon Part 2 is coming out next year. It's called The Scar Giver, also probably a reference to Korra, maybe a name she was given when she was a soldier of the Empire in scenes like this. It stars Charlie Hunnam, Jaiman Hansu, Anthony Hopkins, Sophia Patella, whole bunch of familiar faces that you see like Ed Screen. Velt was a settlement known mostly for farming. It's where the heroes of Rebel Moon started their journey when the Imperium arrived for their food. Ray Fisher is playing Darian Bloodaxe alongside his sister Deborah. They're low resource resistance fighters. Charlie Hunnam is playing Kai. He's a mercenary. Jaiman Hansu's General Titus was an Imperium general or former general who turned on the world he once defended to live a sad life fighting in a coliseum. His experience being a general in their forces scarred him, causing him to leave and become a gladiator. He was a former ally of Korra, so when she's looking to defend Velt from the Imperium, he's the first person that she goes to. Michelle Huisman is playing Gunner. He's another farmer living on Velt that becomes part of their resistance. Carrie Elways, of all people, is playing the King of the Galactic Empire, like the King of the Imperium. Fra Free is playing the Regent Balisarius. He's the leader of the Imperium invasion. Ed Screen is playing the Admiral Noble, who's another leader in their forces. These really crazy looking people behind them in these awesome costumes are called scribes. They're part of a religious group on the Imperium homeworld tasked with writing down the history of the galaxy. Within the universe of Rebel Moon, they call the Imperium's homeworld Mother World. But a lot of the history that the scribes write down is influenced by the politics of the Imperium, so they aren't always necessarily writing down the true history of the galaxy. The shirtless dude here with the crazy abs is Tarek. He was a member of a noble family in the Imperium, but after his family had a run with Mother World, Tarek wound up owing a life debt to a rancher for whom he worked as an indentured servant, honor bound to see out his debt. So when Korra is going around trying to recruit resistance fighters, he initially refuses but eventually agrees to join them. The movie's about a peaceful colony on the edge of the galaxy that's threatened by the armies of a tyrannical regent named Belisarius. The desperate civilians dispatch a young woman who has mysterious past to seek out warriors from nearby planets to help them challenge the region. Anthony Hopkins is playing Jimmy. He's a robot knight. This character here and Sophia Batella is playing the titular Korra who's going around trying to defend the planet. But I don't think her name Korra was inspired by Korra from the legend of Korra in the Avatar universe. Netflix also just released a teaser trailer for their live action Avatar The Last Airbender. I did a video for it so I'll link it at the end of this. The large ship landing seems like it belongs to the evil region character. This is actually Zack Snyder talking about the film with Michael Giacchino who just got done directing Werewolf by Night for Marvel. There's a community on a planet, a farming planet, and um, these, uh, there's a bunch of bad guys. Um, the Mother World's armies are in the area and they need to be fed so they, they come to the village and ask for uh, the village to feed them basically while they're doing their war. Uh, in that area of the galaxy and of course um, they are not uh, kind about asking and the result will probably be the obliteration of the village and so the villagers decide to fight and so you know they have to go out into the galaxy and collect some soldiers to warriors to help because the movie is two parts and part two is coming out next year, I'm assuming there'll be some kind of cliffhanger ending like some WTF moment that they leave things on that pushes into the beginning of the second film. And to explain that video game that Zack Snyder explained is going to be based on the two movies, he said it'll take place after the events of the movies and you'll play like a rebel that you can pick and you go on missions. But generally it's meant to expand the universe of Rebel Moon. Like he plans to turn this into a much bigger Star Wars universe of his own at Netflix that he can just play in. So he probably has plans for sequels, for prequels, for spinoff movies. You get the idea. He already kind of did that with his Army of the Dead franchise of movies, like he released another movie within that universe that was meant to spin off from the last one that he just released. 
Generally, the trailer looks really crazy, so everybody just post all your reactions in the comments below. Like, there's a whole bunch of new IP that he's trying to introduce here, like a whole bunch of world building that he's doing. But you can see the influences of what used to be a Star Wars movie, like a bunch of space Nazis with a giant empire and emperor that they're all trying to stand against. A bunch of rebels standing against an empire. Big reminder too, my Ahsoka episode 1 video will post later tonight after they air the episode, but they're airing episode 2 back to back. My episode 2 video won't post till Wednesday morning. After that, episodes will be one per week. There are eight episodes total just like The Mandalorian. It's meant to be connected to The Mandalorian. It'll take place right after The Mandalorian season 3. Click here for that Ahsoka episode 1 video. I'll update the link as soon as I post that. And click here for that Henry Cavill Warhammer trailer for his new series. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.